Sexy time with nigga senpai. Oh, bring the belt and the rope. Bruh. I suck the air out your mouth, girl. Take that breath away. You Bruh. feel me? All right. How y'all doing? It's your boy JC, and welcome back to some more perfume mirror. Shake my hand as usual to let me know in the comment section below what did you eat? For dinner or if you're gonna eat dinner what do you plan on eating hey man we gotta say anything nino's bay you saw that last title i wasn't capping on that hey man that was a little shorter episode because i was tired but i'm a little energized no i'm not it's still the same time i'm recording last time i hate it here all right man we got in the car now we have to i don't even know all right let's get this over with aside from the tinge of the leather conditioner and lemony tang of energy drink recently spilled on the floor mats the air inside is clean and warm y'all drink energy drinks Bruh. the sea is occupied by what you can imagine a toolbox of some sort secured to the surface with the self safety belt the box bangs loudly on the side of the door as the car speeds up along the highway Taking sharp turns and abrupt turns. Jewel nestles herself close to you, looping your arms together and share the warmth. More for your sake than hers. The palm that lies on your thigh lax is lax, but the grip of her other hand as duffel bag tightens. Man, when y'all get new words, y'all just be using them like it's freaking, like it's not a trump card or something. When she notice your stare, you visibly force yourself up to see, uh, ease up, sending its tiny stiff smile. She looks quick, uh, looks away to watch the moon as it slowly disappears behind the horizon. An empty can of the energy drink dislodges itself from under your feet, rattling side to side as it gets trapped underneath the seat where it stays tightly until you arrive, a Lazar. During the entirety of the round, Nino barely speaks, though you prepared yourself for an interrogation as soon as you enter the SUV. It never comes. In fact, Nino is silent for the most of the ride though she's reluctantly answers from your questions, providing additional information when it is on dragged from her. Not even when Jewel asks after her grandmother and sister. Agent calmly explains that they're somewhere safe, and after prolonged prodding, does she elaborate? Laurent is with him, unofficially, of course, as not to leave any unnecessary documentation. He's officially he's on vacation, which in hindsight could be considered more suspicious. Why? He doesn't take time off? Nina laughs, then shakes her head. Nobody would dare to ask him about it. So you needed to worry. We figured the culprit, whoever they are, might want to lure you out by using your family. They are safe, I can promise you that. Man, I don't know them people. The insurement doesn't ease Jules' worry. In the confinement of the car, the tart scent of lemons prickles your eyes, heavy and sour. The odor of distress persists long after the sun has set on the sky, coating the world with hues of gold and scarlet. Once you leave uh, the enormous Welcome to Alazar sign behind, and the car decelerates considerably, it gets harder not to drift away. You catch yourself rubbing your eyes until they are red and puffy. The stingy pain irritates you more than it helps you stay awake. The lack of sleep worsens your hunger. The pack of unsalted crackers you share with Jewel barely sa satiates. Is that, did I say that correctly? Um, your backside is completely numb, your legs are tingling, and all you can dream of is getting out of the SUV. Luckily for you, the agony ends swiftly. Where to? My place first, I guess. You say, not wasting breath, to give Nino your address. And rightly so, because she turns into the right alleyway even before you're finished speaking, knowing the way perhaps even better than you. Your newly rented apartment is on the industrial side of the city, more on the outskirts. You don't care much for it, it's just a place where you return to sleep. Someone like you can't afford to get too attached, get, get too, uh, attached to a place, when not the possibility of having to leave overnight is more than plausible. It's something you have to grow used to, and yet, you have to admit it bothers you. I mean, I can understand why it would probably bother somebody because it's like, your home is not your home. You feel like you're always on the run, and if you're not really of a person who can like be in, live that nomadic lifestyle, this sucks. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna make a save. There's so many freaking saves. I, I don't, it doesn't say critical choice, so that's one thing. 
I feel like the critical choices matter, so these ones don't. Um, so I just need to only save when it says critical choice. So you have to admit it bothers you. Perhaps it always did, but you learn quite early that the same things you want in always the way things have to be are rarely one in the same. Still, there, during the few precious times when you do allow yourself to daydream, you imagine a reality w in which you didn't have to hide. Either here in the Lazar or brought in a country with fewer restrictions, where people like you are treated like normal citizens, or at least more likely a safety hazard and less like a danger to society. It would f be finally nice to stop running and put down some good roots. Fantasy fills you both with longing and profound sense of injustice. At the end of the day, however, it joins all the other pipe dreams in the far corner of your mind. Somehow, just thinking about returning to your apartment puts you in a better mood. Sure, it's small and only temporarily, but it's yours. And now that the heat is off, it's safe. As much as anything can be these days. And then out of nowhere, Sylvia pulls up with her ugly wig from Party City. The exhaustion that weighs on you is so heavy that you only notice the vehicle has stopped when Nino repeats your name. Nigga Senpai. Mm, say that again. Talk to me. What? What? Yeah, what? Um, Nino lets out an exaggerated sigh before meeting your eyes in the rearview mirror. I said, we're here. Unless you'd rather go with me to the office. No, thank you. That's what I thought. Hey, Jewel, what's up? Let's go. We can get sexy time. <laughs> sexy time with nigga senpai. All right, bring the belt and the rope. Bruh. You on belt of the seatbelt. Ready to throw yourself out of the car. Before you can exit, Jewel stops you. Hey, would you... Yeah? I... No, it's nothing. When you turn to look at her fully, she shakes her head. Are you not coming with me? Are you sure? Yes, I... Guys, Nino sighs impatiently, somehow managed to even sound more dry than usual. This long farewell is very lovely, but I don't have all day. To her credit, she doesn't roll her eyes, but you feel like it's only barely. Dismissal is clear. And seeing as you are not exactly eager to stay in her car any longer than strictly necessary, with one last are you sure and a quick affirmation from Jewel, step out of the SUV. Stay safe, okay? So we're gonna be by ourselves? I need you to keep touching me and being annoying. And levitate me. Stay safe, okay? Jewel yells after you. Actually, can Jewel levitate people? Is that a possibility? And then, um, then laughs when you return, when you turn to send her a grin. Don't I always? Do you ever? You don't linger to watch Nino drive away, starting to walk as soon as your feet hit the pavement. The stench of exhaust fumes from the nearby factory welcomes you home. The dense smoke irritates your nostrils, almost making you sneeze. You haven't lived here long enough to grow used to it. Knowing your track record, you'll move out before you ever do. Why is we still hearing the car sound effects? Get it out of the production, homie. You know that the district is enough to locate the place. Both eyes close. Despite the labyrinth of serpentine alleyways, alleys, you have to traverse first. The long stroll is a small price to pay for the security in an area so lively. Your face but one amongst a sea of others, easy to miss. You don't see many people on your way to the tenement, arriving there without an interruptions. Getting inside, you nod in sight silent, greeting when your eyes meet the doorman. He waits to see your ID before passing you the key. The strange regulations make you feel that like you're work living in the motel room again. Strangely nostalgic. The elevator is out of order. The faded sticker is sure sign that it's going to stay that way. It's not surprising, if disheartening, having to tackle the stairs all the way to the highest level. Man, you gotta do a little workout, you know what I'm saying? Even though after you've been pretty much working out a whole situation, you can consider yourself lucky for being the only tenant on the floor since you don't have to look over your shoulder every time you open the door. I would wish I can live in an apartment complex where it's just nobody around you you don't get noise complaints bruh well both doors which is another benefit two sets of reinforced doors four locks and a deadbolt it takes you a solid minute to get inside but the peace of mind you have after closing the locks behind you makes the hassle worth it you leave the key in the build door turning around to take a look at your house a monstrous wardrobe made entirely of walnut wood is the first thing you notice it doesn't belong to you of course you never owned a piece of furniture larger than the chair Decorations are here, here are scarce. 
You don't have the luxury of wasting cash on cash on things you don't need. Is Flavio gonna meet up with us? Cause I remember that from Laurent's route, right? That said, you don't exactly live as a hermit. The overall style you were going for could be described as, yeah, see, this is where we go in. Um, we get a minimalist style, you know what I'm saying? A white decor simply optically enlarges the otherwise plain room while retaining some of its severity. Once you make sure there's nothing on the bed that needs to be removed, you let yourself fall on the bed. Despite the window you left carelessly open the night of the warehouse incident, the stench of dust is heavy in the air, clinging to every surface of your home. You'll need to give your place a get big clean up as soon as possible. For, for now, you allow yourself a quick rest, absent-mindedly watching the specks of dust dance on the breeze. There are several M SMSs, uh, two from the night of the warehouse incident, both from Reed calling you an a-hole for going to see Victor without him. Glancing at the clock, half past 12, you decide to send Reed a quick anticlimactic I'm back. It's too early for him to be awake, so you have a couple of hours of peace before he calls to reprimand you for vanishing without a trace. You feel guilty if you didn't know that he keeps tabs on you either way. But as always, he complains a bit before magnanimously uh, offering his friendship back with a steep price of a meal in a fancy restaurant. Though after this whole mess is over, maybe you'll buy him two as thanks for his help obtaining the documents that helped prove your innocence. If you survive the ordeal, that is. I was expected, other than the ping announcing the successfully sent message, your cell phone remains silent. The device is heavy weight in your hand, though as you ought to drop it on the nightstand, you take it with you back on the bed. As you lie on soft on the sheets, you promise yourself to only close your eyes for a second. The second passes after two more, your consciousness fades. You sleep well and deep, uninterrupted. Yeah, get some sleep. You wake up disoriented. The sky still outside is dark. Yeah, then change it to dark. It looks bright. You must have slept the entire day away, though it feels like merely a few minutes has passed since you fell asleep. Ah, that was loud in my ear, brother. Unexpected buzzing of your cell phone shakes the mattress, giving you a jolt, and you find yourself answering the phone without checking the screen. But it's not Jules' voice you hear on the receiver. Do you have any windows open? <laughs> Bro, we're, f we're, we're screwed. We're screwed. What do you think? The thick panic in Nino's tone takes you aback so much so that you're unable to cobble together anything more than a rough what? Windows, Nika Senpai. Do you have any windows open? I. Yes, you. Close them now. Bro, we've been asleep for a while. Whoever was trying to kill us is already here. You could get the booty meat. Um, the shock period with the leftover days make you follow Nino's orders before you can stop yourself. You close the window and pick up the phone, demand answers that don't come. Stay where you are. Nino snaps instead, and the line goes dead. A laughable command. Where are you supposed to go? Overwhelmed and barely awake, you sit on the floor, staring at your hands. Brother. Nino arrives, she accompanied by a dozen agents. Jesus. They transport you into a secluded location, a facility outside Lazar. Uh, e. Lazar, where you were to meet with Jules' family. Reed's there too. So is his brother. Why does she instantly knew like know like our windows are open? Like that's just weird, champ. The only person is missing is Jewel. After leaving the apartment, vanished into thin air. The wait is torturous, but in less than a month, the culprit is captured and you are free to go. Your life after that continues as it always does did, save for one disruption. Joe never comes back and nobody knows why. No way. I said. No. Neutral ends. Dude. Okay. I'm not mad the fact that we got a neutral end. I'm mad the fact that like out of all the ends, I don't even know which one are critical. Like I don't like we got so many. Look at this, guys. We literally have like two page worth of critical choices. Like how can I know for a fact? Like, how do I figure out the, the right one for the ending, bruh? This doesn't have like a critical choice. This one doesn't have a critical choice. I'm looking for the ones that are critical choices. So maybe I was just saving joints without critical choices. Okay, this one is a critical choice, right? So instead of like going with Jewel, let's go alone. I feel like this is right before we meet Sylvia. So I feel like we would be dead. Let's skip, let's skip and see. All right, so we're alone. She's using a lure on us, just skipping through it. Nothing personal. Uh, do we still kill ourselves? Brother, 
Get out of my face with that. All right, well, that didn't work, guys. Okay, so it doesn't matter what we do. We, we If we want to avoid that, we have to do that. I don't know if being in love with Jewel saves us. Like, all these love moments, I don't know if this makes anything. Because, again, I picked all the ones that, you know, make sense. We, we're responding to Jewel's love. This one's not a uh, critical choice. This one's not either. So let's get to this page. Okay, this one's a critical choice ahead. Uh, wouldn't. Then you wouldn't have a choice but join the agency. Do you regret it? Maybe it would be easier if I did. I think I did. I wouldn't on this one. With the joining the agency. It says it's a critical choice, but I don't know. Okay, it says she passes the vial and you don't take it. Well, look, I feel like we will die if we do take it. So let's don't take it this time. Let's just see what happens. It's probably for the best. Help you know what you're doing. We can't just can't just what. So then. Okay, that's when that happens. So let's skip to the point where we get to. Uh, so if you don't have the vial, I guess you still you still somehow survive, but you don't use the vial. My house, you're more than welcome to join me. You accept the offer knowing you can't possibly refuse. Wait, do we have an option? This is different. So we go to, oh, okay, so we go to uh, Jules' house now. I'm not gonna lie, I was skipping all that dialogue. Nina drops you off on the parking lot near the intersection where you met her for the first time and you're still under the influence of perfume air. We'll be in the touch. She hits accelerated speeds away as soon as your back is closed. A little surprised she let us go. You meant you watching the SUV blend with the heavy traffic before turning to Jewel. The only thing different that we did was didn't accept the vial. You know, she has someone trailing us, right? She says it easily, almost joking, hiding in the bitterness. Well, okay, you're probably right. You sigh, taking a glance at the sky while you ma march down a busy street. It's still early, but the days are becoming shorter and the night approaches relentlessly. Just because the sun shines now doesn't mean it won't remain so. With a quarter of an hour, and the sky shifts from grayish to crimson, and from crimson to blue, thickening clouds overhead, heralding a downpour. The world dims, drenched in ultramarine. First droplets of rain land on your face. All right, bruh. And science interrupted by only tapping, tapping of the rain on the asphalt. Jewel leads you into her house. All right, where's that ugly baby? <laughs> Is there anything you're bad at? You joke, lean on the wall, try not to get dirty with the crime, the grime clinging to your clothes, cooking. Uh, ex uh, Jewel exclaims immediately after laughing softly while she unpacks her bag, pulling out the last set of clean clothes and dumping the rest into a laundry basket in the corner of her room. By the time she's done, your curiosity wins and you become intimately acquainted with every item in her bedroom. Enabled by Jules' encouragement, you find yourself plucking at the strings of her acoustic guitar. Would you play something for me? You ask, returning the instrument to its place behind the table, table in favor of a bundle of spare clothes Jewel prepared for you. Maybe later. If you take a shower or you'll get sick. Her concern is sweet, if unnecessary. You weren't out in the rain long enough to get yourself soaked. But you are in dire need of a wash. That's true. And there are things you need to do before that. I'd like to make a call first, if you don't mind. Sure thing. The landline phone is in the living room. We ain't got our own phone? Picking up the own change of clothes, Jewel points out to you in the right direction and then towards the bathroom to give you some privacy. Once you're alone, you pick up the phone and punch in Reed's number. Unsurprisingly, he doesn't pick up. It's late in the evening. He's already at work. You decide to leave him at a source message quick hi i'm back call me when you're free which would likely would be sooner than later he hate to miss a chance to reprimand you for vanishing without trace yep god dang what happened to your eyes you a goth girl you've been playing too much for a heart by the way if y'all want to love to see a video of that i haven't done a game i haven't played that game in a minute couldn't stay away you tease circling around her pausing long enough to see her blush before taking her place i try to hurry it but i can't promise anything jules laughter echoes Stored about the door separating you from each other. But well, don't rush on my account. I won't. The shower takes slightly longer than you intended to. The concentration fades frequently, leaving you not unlike the, a statue standing still under the faucet as the water cascades down your back, scorching now where it was mild and pleasantly warm. You leave the bathroom with your skin rubbed raw. The thoughts that weighed on you earlier are once again burned, buried deep down with the rest of your fears and hypotheses. Hypothesis. The only scent that persists on you now is the neutral fragrance of olive in one body soap and distinct scent of detergent on your fresh clothes. Joe's expression is peaceful. Weeks ago, you might have called it indifferent, 
but the stillness of the room, the certain strangeness overcomes you. The haziness makes you feel as though you're in a dream. You recall the forest, the warehouse, the car, but it's all a distant memory now. Unreal. The rain falls and you stand in place, not daring to breathe. The moment dispelled. Tranquility, likewise, is fragile, shatterable. And so you are glad it's not you who breaks it. Are you worried? It appears, though, as you were not the only one who spent time apart overthinking. All right, this is not a crucial moment, so we don't care. It's not the first time somebody wanted me to dead. Indirectly or indirectly, your line of work isn't for the faint of heart. But now it's the first time someone's dangerous and influential. You have a point, but the threat is a threat. It doesn't feel any different. I'm here if you need me. Jewel offers in, finally looking away from the window. Thanks. Me too. I know. The comfortable silence that settles over you doesn't last long, but you don't mourn its loss when it's replaced by Jewel's voice. You should get some rest. She says gently. I am. Don't say you're not tired. I am quite stern, uh, the, not the quite stern admonishment is contradicted by the tender way she brushes her fingertips over your eyelids, where the skin is purplish and tender. You stayed up to watch at the whole motel. How long has it been since then? Bro, worry about you. Nearly two days. There's no point in arguing over it. Jewel was with you the whole time. Go to bed. What about you? Unlike you, I did get some shut eye earlier. Even though the possibility of Nino delivering you a straight to the SPD office did cross your mind, there was nothing better to do in the car but than dozing. And the short naps you took weren't enough to account for nearly 48 hours of sleep deprivation. Fine. You agree, raising your hand to cover Jules' interlacing fingers and pulling her without with you as even as she quirks her brow. Half in question, half in amusement. I sleep better with you there. You're re you reason unnecessarily, knowing that Jewel really needs much convincing, indulging you, especially late. Couch dips under your combined weight, comforting rather than uh, when Jewel's arm wraps itself around your waist. Lame, uh, if Jewel shared your gift, she would have known what you feel towards her without having to ask. It would have saved you the awkwardness of having to dance around each other in circles. Man, calm down over here like the rest of us. You gotta pull the girls correctly. <laughs> But she doesn't, and you lack the words to tell her how much she means to you. Even I love you seems inadequate to convey the magnitude of your affection. You never dare to hope, and yet, here you are, in the wrong place at the wrong time, but with the right person. Somehow you didn't think you'd ever get this lucky. When minutes pass and you still refuse to close your eyes, Jewel draws the bottom of the lip between her teeth before chuckling. Supposed to be sleeping. How could I when I didn't even get a kiss goodnight? Oh, how thoughtless of me. Jewel yields to your man demands, voice or not, and so it doesn't surprise you when she leans in to peck your forehead and temple and the bridge of your nose. Dang. Where, what about the neck, the breasticles, and the freaking testicles? Bruh. Pointedly avoiding your lips, knowing that's where you want her the most. Is that enough? Torquil question. Uh, say nope. Yep, there, my neck. <laughs> My nigga money. Uh, the Watsman gives you as she informally. What the frick is that? Dimming when your mouth connect. The flavor of lip balm on her chapped lips is the taste you become well acquainted. I don't need her chapped lips right now. I need her neck, her booty cheeks. The swirl of her tongue against yours as you pry her lips open to deepen the kiss. It's quick and inexplicable sweet. That's all. There's only one option. The what? What's the whole point <laughs> if there's one option? And that's what you wanted. The sweetness of her breath fans over your jaw as she breaks the kiss. She doesn't retreat, cupping your cheeks. Ooh, what type of cheeks? The A small eternity passes like this, just the two of you entangled as one. You know. She, Jewel starts in murmur, pressing her forehead against yours. With both of her hands bracketing your face, she is your whole world. She looks at you though as she, you are hers. It took ages before I came into terms with how much I love you. Oh? Resting so close, nearly chest to test, chest, you feel pu her pulse quickens. A cute dry aroma of salt breaks through the redolence of cinnamon and seizes your chest in a voice, a vice tight grip. I thought, squeezing her eyes, she tucks herself against you. Suddenly small and so ver terribly vulnerable. If I loved you less, it would be easier. Easier? To let you go. And that's when you realize a surprising certainty that if for not the lassitude 
a plague's jewel whether she wants to admit it or not. You might have never known how reserved she was to confess to you when she did. That had the situation been less dire, your life not in danger, she might have never told you what she felt. In your mind, she's always been a bold one, not afraid of speaking her mind. You might have misunderstood her once again. You don't... You don't have to let me go, is that what you almost said? Oh, stopping yourself before the promise can turn into a lie. That's why I had to tell you. Jewel continues, unaware of your internal turmoil, preoccupied with her own. Because if I didn't, and if I lost you, I wouldn't be able to forgive myself for not trying. You understand, perhaps better than she realized. You have to share, you too have had your share of missed chances, forfeit opportunities, dreams you had to abandon. You can only be grateful that Jewel wasn't one of them. I'm glad you did. You choke out less steadily than you'd like. Nodding stiffly against your chest, Jewel mumbles something with vaguely like me too. She lies tense until you coax her relax, coax her to relax with gentle words and even gentler ch touches. She falls asleep first. Oh, is that all we do? And only when her body's still under your hands do you allow yourself to drift off as well. Spend the rest of the night wrapped in each other's embrace. You can't recall when it was the last time you sleep so well. Slept so well. Ow. You're roused gradually awakened by the distant melody of the landline phone. The muted noise doesn't seem to bother Jewel at all. Her testament of her exhaustion if she can sleep through the disturbance. I thought she wasn't tired. Spread over the side of the couch facing toward the wall. Number flickering on the screen isn't saved on the context list, but you recognize it from a business card. She did warn you she'd call you, most likely to inquire your, after your decision. You didn't give too much consideration since you returned, and now you have only a second to make up your mind. If you pick up, Nina might try to convince you to join forces. If you don't, it would be an equivalent to, of a refusal. With that in mind, you... Golly, so many critical choices. Well, you already know what's bracken, guys. So, we're gonna do, we're gonna, let's not pick up. You let the phone ring. Jewel's right. The less contact you have with the SPD, the better. And since Nina was a positive that they could capture the culprit without you, you don't feel guilty about ignoring the call. As long as you're hidden inside the apartment, you should be safe. Of course, you're going to need a long-term plan while you wait for the SPD to resolve the issue without endangering yourself in the process. For now, you push yourself off of the couch, stretch your sore limbs, and have an all the intention of returning under the blankets and catching some Z's. Your bones crack with a satisfying pop, muscles slackening as you're ready yourself for another nap. However, before you can lie down, the movement of your right ensnares you. A butterfly flies past the gap between the kitchen window, its little wings fluttering idly as it flies down the corridor, resting on the doorframe. Its red admiral specks of blood white and white on the- what the freak? Blood red and white on the dark wings are impossible to mistake. You watch it for a bit, then it moves to scan your surroundings in search of a spare container you can use to catch the insect while and release it outside. But that's a freaking perfume air user. Don't don't be oblivious. When you look up, you see your own face, a mirror image, except a body in front of you is bare from head to toe. Before you can scream, your double launches forward. With the momentum on their side, the shifter smashes you against the wall with a loud What the frick? What do we get into freaking fighting mode? One hand crushes your windpipe and the other covers your mouth with a sweet smelling handkerchief. The either like odor clogs your throat. You harder you struggle, the tighter the shifter squeezes. I'd carry both about their nudity about their nudity and the nails dig it in the beat of their arms. The shifter leaves you struggling for breath. The battle is one-sided, nearly soundless and quick. The, your vision blurs at the darkness. If you don't kick him in the balls, soon you are no more. Why do we keep getting bad endings? I swear, we gotta pick up now. So there's no point of not picking up if we're gonna die. You don't trust the SPD, but you have to be extremely cocky to think you could evade a murderer by yourself. In hindsight, working with the SPD could be your best chance at escaping relatively unscathed. If that is, you could conceal your true identity and tear from agent. With the reside side, you answer the phone with the last ping. Yet, do you have any windows open? So that's, so a shifter just pulls through with the windows. All right, what's wrong? She groans, then quickly sobers up to see the state you're in. Nigga senpai, I have no clue. You rush back to the phone to, man, to demand answers. Turn the volume all the way up so Jewel can hear as well. Okay, now tell me what the fuck is going on. There's no time. Nino's voice still sounds high and breathy, breathy, but much calmer now that she's assured that you've done what she directed you to do. 
Stay where you are. I'll explain later. Explain now! No, stay on your guard. Don't let anyone in. Anyone... Can you hear me? You hear me? Not even you? Not even me. So you would just impair side? Not unless you leave a gap, which I told you not to do. I thought you... Don't walk through the walls. No buts. Nino snaps. Yes, ma'am. I will listen. Nino snaps and the line goes dead. I think goes... Wait, 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 wait. What was that? What was that? Bro, did y'all see that? Did we just make it a chapter seven? Let's go! I think that was chapter seven. I'm not gonna lie. I think we made it. So we did it with Jewel's route. Duel, Jewel doesn't seem to share your quandary. Bending over to pick up the discarded clothes, she scoffs. What a lovely wake up call. She promptly starts to redress. Despite the deep lines, the pillow stamped on her cheek, she's alert, more so than you. The remnants of sleep clouded your mind up. Till now, we haven't cleared completely. Lack of prosperity. Proper rest duels the anticipation you might have felt otherwise, filling you first and foremost with. I don't know what innovation is, but whatever. It's better than dread and anger. Trouble after work, trouble. It's, it's like a bad joke. The second you take a moment to fight for a breath, you're forced to sprint, never catching a break. The exhaustion makes it hard for you to try to treat anything. Seriously, though. How can you when everything has happened since the warehouse debacle feels akin to the nightmare, a prolonged dream that you're going to wake up from soon enough? Or so you hope. After scrubbing the heel of your palm in your, over your stingy eyes in a feeble attempt to soothing the ache, you follow Jules' example. What's the deal with the windows? You asked to break the suns. The, the request was so strange you can't immediately find a reason for it. Jules shrugs with one arm, hanging her duffel bag over the other. There, there are what at least few afflictions that could make breaking in easier. Though the even though the wind the buildings are ex made exclusively out of materials that are impossible to penetrate, leaving a window open would be enough for an invitation for a hitman who knows what they're doing. But that doesn't explain the urgency. You see and hear the crook, even afflicted one, with a couple exceptions. Intangibility, for example, incredibly rare affliction, given the sacredity of scarcity of fives of that particular gift. The chances of the random burglar stumbling into you are less than one in a billion, so you can confidently jolt that down. Then again, can't be assured of anything these days. So that's the assassin, or assassins sh you should say. What an amazing idea to consider, that you can be, can't be sure who and how many people are after your life. If it's not disintegration and not intangibility, then wait, what about shape shifting? Your brain wasn't so overwhelmed that you might have realized it earlier. It is such a clear theme after all. Victor's killer, Sylvia or not, the person who came to the meeting, Renee set up for you, a shifter or not, then the one you stumbled into the motel. There's a shifter involved, you knew that, but you've been so focused on the body snatching aspect of this affliction, you forgot reshaping isn't limited to stealing bo human bodies. When the tears are one to three relatively harmless with their parlor tricks or more and less temporary changes to their appearance. Tears four to five can disguise themselves more thoroughly in the form of another individual or an animal. An ink set, for example, would only need a tiny gift to slither through, which in most likely Nino was so adamant about scaring all the entrances to the apartment, and rightly so. I hate this. Jewel has seems to have drawn the same conclusions because she pales. Her front teeth bite down her lower lip, leaving pale indents in the tissue. Uh, Jewel is a four. From the first moment of your acquaintance, she gave the impression of being wary of other gifted. It took you a while before you learn how to not take it personally. Joel's voice com comes out strangled. She takes a moment to clear her throat again with no b better result. What if the shifter... Man, just be on guard, bruh. What if we got separated? We won't. We have to stay together, all right? But what if something happens? It takes seconds of distraction. Jewel's fingers in the wind stands strains of hair crooking around the locks pulling with absent-minded viciousness what if they use your visage to trick me what if they use mine to hurt you what hey crossing the room as fast as you can jules hands uh, you catch jules hands and squeeze them tightly as you lure them we stay together they can't do anything to us we have ways to check right yep but they can ask if they have the funds they bro just all right a shifter can mimic what they know. They don't know you. Nobody else does. They have no medical records, no official papers. Nigga Senpai Morn. The name that you have printed on your ID belongs to a dead body buried decades ago. The eye of the law, you don't exist. Jewel has more concerns than you, then a shifter can utilize her body in different ways. Harm more people than just you. How about a code? 
something that you and I only know. Jewel freezes, her hands slip up from your grasp, but her frame relaxes slightly as she muses over your words. That's... that's genius. Uh, you know, I do say so myself. Why, thank you. I have my moments. Jewel snorts and you feel the corners of your mouth stretch in corresponding small. Do you have a suggestion? Several. You weren't so secretive for nothing. All in a sense of purpose, you are direct opposite of an open book. How about... Wait! Tugging at the zipper of the duffel bag that sways by her hip, Joel fishes out a black permanent marker. We should write it down, just in case somebody's listening. Right. Maybe here. Tucking up the sleeve of the shirt, uncovered patch of skin of her form hour. Using the body instead of a piece of paper. So for the additional defense, it would be better if to show the code rather than recite as to not get overheard. Passing them you the marker, the jewel rolls the fabric higher, securing it around the elbow. Okay, so don't tell me. Right. Thank you. Trust me for with this. As she says this, the sweetness of lemongrass partially replaces the sharpness of ammonia. The amount of raw affection she displays is enough to make your chest ache. I trust you with everything. I trust you too. No matter what happens, we have each other, right? Right. We can see the shift in her eyes. It's a flash of hesitation replaced by pure resolve with five strokes. Jules spells the name Junia right next to yours. Her chicken scrawl is a familiar one. The letters are big, hard to read. The wide spaces between. I didn't know you had a fake name. It's not fake. I've got to change. Legally. I mean, you had to do it with this type of job. My surname, too, is originally my father's. It was the only way for me and my sister to settle outside of the institute without being used as a bargaining chip to either lure the last members out or bring the government to their doorsteps. Damn, bruh. I would have stayed there with them. Had it not been for Leon. Leon. Traces of humor and de dejection. You can find in a mirror. Oh, no. We want to have a normal childhood. A future. So I left. When we spoke about regrets, do you remember? Oh, yeah. On the night of the rooftop. I, w I wasn't absolutely sure, but even then, now I am. I don't have any regret. I don't regret anything that had led me here to you. Jewel. Uh-oh. There it is. Go on. We don't have forever. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's Reed. And we will continue this in the next episode. All right, y'all, y'all see it. Jewel's route, chapter seven. So we got it with Jewel. The only thing that's weird is like, I couldn't get it with Laurent. So I'm thinking maybe if we restart Laurent, we might be able to get the secret ending, but then I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, this is getting juicy, bro. I didn't think we were gonna get the chapter seven because after we got that neutral end, because I was like, dang, like I did everything. What do you want me to do? But then I'm like going back and I realized there's some a lot of critical choices with Jewel's. We didn't get that with Laurent from what I've done done when I try to redo it. So we're going to have to try that when we finish with reads. But I would say we probably have one more episode left. I don't know how long chapter seven is truly. So we might have two more episodes left for Jules route. And then we're going to do reads and then we're going to see if we can get Laurent. So this game, we're not done with the completely done with this game. That's for sure. But it's getting interesting, which I kind of skipped over the dialogue of what happened and change when you didn't pick the when you didn't take the vow. So I should have probably honestly, I might have to go back and see what they say on that. But now that we avoided that, we're learning a little bit more about the shapeshifters and all this stuff. So shapeshifters pretty much can shapeshift at anything as long as they know something of you. So the, even then, it begs me the question if Sylvia is even Sylvia, maybe Sylvia or the head of SPD looks different or maybe if she does look like that, they were just all shapeshifters from the beginning. Maybe the master don't actually go out. You know what I'm saying? You don't use your king to attack. You let the other people do it. So you let your pawns and the knights and the rooks do the work. So maybe that's this is all a chess game to her. I'm interested to see how it's going to turn out. I'm really messing with Nino. I'm really messing with um, Jewel um, and all these characters so far. I still don't, I honestly don't even trust Renee if I have to be completely honest with you. Because there's a part of me where it's like, She's very secretive and she doesn't want to like tell you anything. I don't know. There's just something with her where, you know, she already really likes Sylvia. So that's like a downfall. But yet she's good friends with Jules. So I don't know. It, it, it's questionable. Either way, as usual, thoughts, theories down below. And don't forget to tell me what you ate for dinner, bro. Because God dang, bro. Y'all don't comment. Either way, y'all so best. Keep it special. I'm going to see you when I see you. Peace.